It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been five days. Let's chill, smoke, and yeah, with YouTube. Let's smoke some weed. Seems kind of weird. 
Um, alright, so where are we going? So, right now, we are coming right over here to the safe humanoid containment area. I wanted to go ahead and introduce you to some of the people and SCPs that you were going to be meeting here during your stay. Oh, okay. Wow! Wait, this is for humanoid SCPs? That it is! Oh, yeah. Can I see some? Of course. Take a look around. That dude's not a human, that's a robot! Humanoid. Oh. Yeah, I guess, yes. yeah, that makes sense. That it does. Ah, cool. Wow, so you've got, like, a little dining area? you got vending machines? That we do. Oh, okay. We even have games for some of them. Well, you got pool! And an own, your own SCP logo pool table. Yes. Wow. Had a little bit of extra to throw in the budget. Okay. As well as game cubes. Oh my god, Zelda! Oh my god, who's playing that? Are you playing it? Yeah, what's up? Hiya. This is Iris. Oh. oh, hello. Are you are you an Hi. SCP? Yeah. Iris is here. Iris here is a Photoshop wizard. And uh, fun fact, uh, the song "Photograph" by Nickelback was written about her. Really? really? That's not true. That's not true. It's absolutely true. I looked it up on Wikipedia. The online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Exactly. Well, that that's the whole point. Anyone can edit it. So let's go ahead and show you to your room. Wait, you mean this isn't my plate? What, this isn't where oh, I'm staying? Absolutely staying? not. You killed hundreds. No, 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 no. Uh, your room is this way. Uh, it, Bye. It was, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> Wait, just let D-Class roam like that? Uh, he is absolutely under, uh, under watch. Don't you worry. All right. How do you know when these... Tesla games aren't going to go off and, like, zap you. I, I could just, I, you never lost anyone to these? Uh, what's today? Uh, uh Tuesday. Tuesday? Don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> How you doing, Larry? Doing good, boss. There you go. Oh, well, this place is a lot more, I guess, professional than a lot of the other facilities I've been to. Absolutely. We pride ourselves on our professionalism and our ability to contain all of these SCPs. Taking a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of bodies, but we definitely come a long way. Whoa. Uh, that's an SCP. I, I never mind. What? What was I talking about? I'm not sure. What are you talking about? Well, I, I walked past one of the SCP doors, but I don't remember it now. It's okay. Okay. Oh, there's a... So this is your room right over here. And see, we even got a sign for you. SCP-8972 Researcher Cabin. Ah, I kind of like that. It's kind of nice having the researcher title back on. And yeah. my name. It, it doesn't say anything rude. It's like... I like that test done in or something like that. Like one of these other places I was at. Oh, so, wait, this is my room? This is your room. Got a nice... Bed, clock, shower, blue bathroom area, a nice desk. And uh, huh. some of the guys here understood that you went through a trying time, so we got you a Nintendo Switch. It's right up there. It's all yours. I, I mean, I appreciate that, but uh, how am I going How am I going to reach that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my office. Uh, I will see you ASAP. Sound good? Uh, sure. Have a good day. It's like a hi. Bye. <sighs> great. That's great. Just like everyone else here at the SCP. Well, ah. oh, who knows? Maybe this will be better. It does seem like they're treating me a little nicer. They're not. There's not like a gigantic screen I can actually shower in peace for once. Uh, I guess I'll just go go take a nap. This is not a lizard. It's a mythical beast. Ah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Ah, Freaking alarms. Ah. <laughs> Wait. You're talking through my food hole. Yes. Um. W w what's up? What? What? What do you need from me? Doctor Maynard felt that I had been. Unnecessarily rude to you, 
So, today I am going to be escorting you. So, up and Adam, get ready. We're heading out. Oh, okay. Make yourself come in, come inside. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Rest, I think. So. You, know, you sleep like that? Good. Well, it's not like he gave me pajamas here. I mean, it's not too cold in here. You could, you know. No. So hold on. According to my list, you guys want me to like review a lot of safe. Slash Euclid items that you're holding in a storage locker. That is precisely it. Follow me. That is a big gun. Your arms ever get tired? Oh yeah. My uh my trigger finger does get itchy though. Well, look, you and I both know if you fire that gun without permission, you'll get demoted as well. All right. Lots of items here. Uh, okay, so I need. Ow, ow, oh, oh, right. Even pick these up in bed. Oh, ow, ouch, ouchy, ouch, ow. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a bad idea. That was a very bad idea. Why would you have me pick up the compulsion treasures? Oh. oh. Hello? So, those compulsion tweezers compulse you to rip out your fingernails and hurt yourself until you die. I'm glad to... I, I think... I, I think we are I, I, much I, 8972, but uh, I'm glad you confirmed it. Well, how... how else... <laughs> like, there's no way for anyone to transport that without dying. Well, it's a good job you're here, then, isn't it? <sighs> Alright, get me out of here. Let me figure out what else we have to deal with. Alright. This time, maybe... Let's not pick up the deadly items that kill me before we actually start testing them, at least. What could the collecting for you, though? I wasn't the one who died. <laughs> Back in, you go. Yeah, you gotta open the door for me. I don't have the clearance anymore. They took it away, remember? Alright, uh... Let's see. Defensive bracelets. Okay, I know those are okay. Oh, no, not the snake. Okay. You know, almost all of these kill me in weird and unusual ways, right? That's very cathartic for me. Do we have a TV, even? Uh, just be somewhere around here. <sighs> okay, I'll just do that later. Uh, this one. Alright, I've got five on me. That's probably enough to, like, prevent a containment breach. I don't want to go too crazy with the items, so... Can you take me to the testing area? Absolutely. Follow me. facilities, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so the first SCP item I have right here is these. This is the power bracelet. Uh, I'm going to attempt to put them on. SCP-154 power bracelets. Going. Wait. Ow! Oh! Ah! Ow! Ow! Okay, wait. Uh, I feel strong, but I, I also, it hurts. Oh! Oh my god. Ouch! Oh, no, no. Could you describe the feeling? It felt like my arm was trying to be ripped off. Wait, is that my bone? Uh, that may in fact be your bone. I did not like that. That was not... <sighs> would, would you like your bone back? I mean, are you going to put it back in my arm? Do I look like a surgeon to you? <laughs> Hold on to the bone. All right. This is going to probably kill me anyway, so... This is not a containment breach. This, all the stuff on me, I hope, will pass on with me. Can of snakes. Do you, do you even know what happens when this when this opens? I haven't been appraised of that. Well, I'm about to vomit up some snakes. Ugh. All right. Yeah, I got all the items. Yeah. Good. All right. Seems like I'm pulling them through whatever limbo, limbo that is with me. You know, you've got a 
quit seeing each other like this. But we're having so much fun together. You know, I bet you like this. You just get to watch me die in, like, cruel and unusual ways just because... ...of about 200 meters. Any professional astrophysicists in our audience will already be well aware that a Schwarzschild radius is the size of the black hole's event horizon. If you remember earlier, we mentioned that an event horizon is the area that surrounds a black hole, and going past this boundary means that you now have a one-way ticket into the black hole whether you like it or not. The fact that SCP-123 doesn't have such a large event horizon, and that only objects placed within the outer sphere are pulled in, shows that the only thing stopping the black hole absorbing everything around it, including all of us, is the cage it's currently held in. Nothing can escape the pull of a black hole. No solid matter, no liquids, not even light. However, in the case of SCP-123, it seems that there is at least one state of matter that this black hole is unable to absorb. Gases. Even though gaseous matter is affected by the gravitational force of SCP-123, for some unknown reason gas cannot breach the gaps in the outer shell surrounding the black hole. The SCP Foundation is still studying why only solids and liquids may pass through the cage while gas cannot, but it's almost certainly for the best. After all, if SCP-123 could absorb gas and pull other elements into its mass, there would be little to stop it from sucking up all the oxygen surrounding it. Somehow, either by an intentional design or by the natural properties of the material it's crafted from, the cage around the inner sphere seems to protect the outside world from the miniature black hole. It prevents the entire planet's air as well as the rest of the planet itself from being pulled in and crushed while also keeping the black hole at a far more manageable size. The two components of SCP-123 seem to behave in a symbiotic manner, acting together as one. When someone moves the outer cage, the black hole will follow and stay in a fixed position, hovering inside the center of the geodesic casing. Just what exactly makes both of SCP-123's parts behave in such a way has left even the Foundation's top researchers baffled. Well, Dear Jess, Holy moly, we've done it. Fuck off. While a miniaturized black hole could potentially cause devastating damage, for now at least, SCP-123 doesn't pose much of a threat, as long as it remains contained by the SCP Foundation. Within the confines of the geodesic cage, the black hole itself is nearly harmless, only pulling in small objects. As a result, the Foundation has been able to securely keep SCP-123 inside one of their facilities. The contained miniature black hole is fastened to a sturdy table with the use of straps and chains. However, personnel are forbidden from affixing any hooks to the gaps in the outer casing. Otherwise, these run the risk of being dragged into the black hole's gravitational pull, potentially along with whatever the hooks were attached to. The Foundation's researchers monitor the black hole 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year. Devices for measuring the gravitational force of SCP-123 are placed within the same room the black hole is kept, but at a safe distance of 100 meters away. Staff are also instructed to never place objects within the outer shell of SCP-123, and are prohibited from inserting any objects through the gaps in the geodesic sphere unless an experiment is taking place. At all times, SCP-123 is to be treated with the utmost care, as if it was a fragile object. And for all the Foundation knows of the unidentified outer sphere, it could well be. If the cage containing the black hole was ever breached, anything within 200 meters would be pulled into the center of SCP-123. <laughs> As all forms of nearby matter were absorbed, the black hole would begin to increase in size, pulling anything and everything into itself as it continued to grow. Before long, the entirety of planet Earth would be collapsing in on itself, all poured towards one single point until the planet fractured. Perhaps the SCP-123 black hole would release and then absorb enough Hawking radiation to seal itself. But by that point, the world as we know it would be gone. A true XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, with pretty much nothing the Foundation can do to stop it once it's already started. Even SCP-2000 would be worthless once it was sucked inside the miniature black hole. So when we say that SCP-123 needs to be handled with extreme care, we truly mean it. The fate of the world depends on it, 
meaning no one member of the Foundation should ever shake the sphere around or exert any kind of force onto it. During any transfers, SCP-123 is not to be transported over large bodies of water in case it begins to pull the liquid into its center. Researchers working near and studying the miniature black hole even have to adhere to a strict dress code to avoid their clothes getting absorbed into the spatial anomaly. Any member of Foundation staff interacting with SCP-123 is instructed that they must wear tight-fitting clothing, so no straps or laces, no chains or other dangling jewelry, and long hair has to be tied back. Sounds a lot like a school uniform dress code, right? It might not be all that fashionable, but it's a small price to pay to avoid getting painfully pulled through the small triangular gaps in the outer shell into the black hole within. The only question left is, what do you do with a tiny, perpetually stable black hole? When left alone, SCP-123 doesn't really seem to have much of a purpose, but it's certainly good at getting rid of things, so well that you'd never, ever see them again. The contained miniature black hole's gravitational force has led to some higher-ranking individuals in the SCP Foundation discussing SCP-123's potentially usefulness as a disposal unit. After all, nothing you'd throw into it would ever come back. However, the head researcher studying this phenomenon is concerned about the structural integrity of the geodesic cage that the black hole is kept in. Anyone looking to dispose of something using SCP-123 must first get this doctor's approval to do so, or request a formal hearing with a foundation higher up. Otherwise, any interactions with the miniature black hole are restricted, with experiments still ongoing to determine how strong that outer cage is, and just how long it's going to hold for. Because if it ever breaks, trust us, you'll know. Now go check out SCP-3001 Red Reality and SCP-2317 The Devourer of Worlds Adore to... Australia's Mikey Paul... Very few people would enjoy getting eaten by a bear in the woods. That would undeniably be an extremely unpleasant thing to happen to anyone. Heck, it's certainly enough to put a damper on an otherwise fun weekend of camping. But the one consolation of undergoing such a tragedy is that you at least know nature is taking its course. After all, bears live in the woods, and if you decide to enter their turf, there's an unwritten agreement that you'll just accept the consequences if a bear decides it doesn't want your company. It's another thing entirely if a bear eats you in your bedroom in the middle of suburbia miles away from any nearby forest. That's the unfortunate fate that befell little Tommy Ellis. His parents heard the bellowing roar of a bear upstairs, the floorboards creaking under its sudden weight. What was happening up there? They ran upstairs, following the sounds of the roars in Tommy's horrible... There is only one news story on every website, newspaper, and TV screen. The flowers are blooming everywhere, all across the globe. Every country, every landmass... The bitter cold of the Antarctic gives way to a glowing rainbow of petals. The Sahara Desert and Death Valley become beacons of thriving technicolor plant life. The highest mountains, the lowest valleys, the darkest caves, the flowers even burst free from the concrete of cities, as if reminding us that really it was never our world. We were only borrowing it. And today, our lease is up. This is SCP-001, object class, unnecessary. It was foretold by tales from other dimensions, a distant future coming down the tracks towards us. And today, the train has reached the station. Nobody's reporting on how the economy or the stock market is doing today. No point. Celebrity scandals have faded away into nothingness. Greedy businessmen, lying politicians, brutal tyrants. None of them are making the headlines today. The very last headlines. The world gone beautiful. And what a shame. It takes the end of it all to make us realize what really matters to us. That's right. You're looking at the end of the world. But it's okay. Don't panic. Take a deep breath in and out. It was bound to happen eventually, so no point worrying now. Even the Foundation knows that this just isn't something they can stop. So instead of asking things like how can we prevent this, or do we have any final tricks up our sleeve, 
Let's ask a different question entirely. What would you do if you knew that you only had 24 hours until all life on Earth ends? Think hard. After all, even if you I'm not from this world, this I'm the Skelet King son. Still come for you. So it does, it does not matter. That means we rule the world basically. That means me and my dad rule the world. All of the humans will disappear besides me, my dad, and my brother, and my sister, and all the other SCPs. Well, these gods will just disappear. Everyone in the human race will just, will just disappear, but us SCPs we will stay here. We cannot die. But humans can die. Ground. Normally he'd assume that this meant he was in some kind of foundation experiment, but not today. Everyone on Earth had an innate sense that the time is now. A kind of gallows calm spreads out over everyone and everything. It's over, and that's okay. We all knew it was going to happen eventually, right? He sighs and gives a slight smile. Those flowers sure are beautiful. That's when he hears footsteps outside his cell approaching. A key slides into his cell door and opens. There stands Dr. Gears, holding a bottle of wine and two glasses. Anyone who knows him might think he's been replaced by some kind of shape-shifting anomaly, or had his mind taken over by a powerful cognito hazard. But no, it's him. The famously cold Dr. Charles Ogden Gears. Dr. Gear says, Come on, it's a lovely day out there. It'd be a terrible waste to spend the whole thing cooped up in here. It'd feel like a trick on any day but this. The D-Class nods and follows the doctor out. The normally oh-so-stoic Foundation senior researcher pours himself and the D-Class each a glass of wine and asks, What's your name, by the way? I don't think I ever checked. The D-Class replies that his name is Harold. The two smile and chat as they exit the now empty D-Class containment wing. Everyone else is outside already. Researchers, guards, administrative staff, and D-classes, all rubbing elbows, enjoying the beautiful sun on their last day together. Elsewhere on site, a flock of SCP-514 is released, just as identical flocks are being released from every containment site all over the world. They've prepared it all for this very day. SCP-514 is a special breed of homing pigeons created by the Mana Charitable Foundation which have the power to suppress aggression for those within their field of anomalous influence. And now millions of them are flying all over the world. After all, there's no point fighting on a day like this. There is no future left to secure. People always told them there would forever be hope until the flowers bloomed. No situation was ever truly over until the world went beautiful. But in the absence of hope, there was something even more inviting. Total absolute. Home. The Site-19 personnel sit together and watch the flowers bloom. Hour 12. All militaries call a global ceasefire. Soldiers from opposing sides hug and shake hands in flowery fields that once seemed choked by death and blood. Borders fade. Bitter rivalries turn to dust. Korea unifies. All is quiet in the Middle East. Gangsters and drug cartels drop their weapons and return home to their families and friends as flocks of SCP-514 fly above. What good is all the blood money in the world on a day like this? Wardens walk cell to cell through all the world's prisons, granting people their freedom again, sometimes after lifetimes of not having it. They taste the air again, feel the sun on their face. They close their eyes, drink it in, and walk among the flowers, free men. Locations of Marshall, Carter, and Dark Limited close their doors and shutter their windows worldwide. For the first time in as long as any of them can remember, they turn their signs to closed. They've earned a day off. Everyone has. The Chaos Insurgency rolls up their plans and burns them. They drop their weapons and throw away their tactical gear. As they do so, they can't help but question themselves. What was it all for in the end? What was any of it for? All the fighting and bloodshed and death. We did it day after day, only to do it again the next day. What silly reasons we killed and died for. 
What silly reasons, indeed. The Global Occult Coalition dismisses its staff, thanking them for their service and telling them to go spend their last hours with the ones they love. Like the Foundation, they accept that this is the one true final end. No ritual to stop, no monster to fight, no evil extra-dimensional entity to thwart. Just go outside and smell the flowers, while you still can. The Serpent's Hand are similar. They decide after decades fighting a losing battle, they'll spend their last day in the Wanderer's Library, reading some of their favorite volumes. All these wonderful stories, now left for other Earths to read. Their own stories would be counted among them in the end, and they take great comfort in that. In a sense, everyone will live forever in the pages of the books in the Wanderer's Library. Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting releases all of its freaks and clowns from their twisted grasp, to go and live out whatever small dreams and tiny pleasures they could find over their last hours. They have no foundation of fear anymore. Nobody minds their strange appearances and odd behaviors. Why would anyone waste such a beautiful day judging others? On the last day on Earth, there's nothing left to prove. Sarcasists drop their ancient flesh-bound tomes, and acolytes of the broken god put down their gilded blades. On the slopes of Siberia, the jungles of Peru, and the most isolated beaches of Mexico. Twisted flesh finally touched living metal in the spirit of husbandry. Their eternal war is at its end. In the face of the blooming world, they didn't seem so different after all. Zero food waste to landfill by 2025? That's today's fresh food people. From director Scott Cooper and producer Guillermo del Toro. Agents of the Dr. Wondertainment Corporation predictably chose to spend their last hours sitting around and playing with toys together. Time well spent, if you ask us. In a highly secretive location, perhaps the most heavily secured place in the entire O5 world, Council. the 13 members of the legendary O5 Council decide to just sit and talk. Anyone who knows anything about this secretive cabal can tell you. The O5 Council has spent a considerable portion of their very, very long lives trying to figure out ways to dodge and cheat death. But now, facing a death they can't dodge, the same calm washing over the rest of the world has finally reached them too. All they can really think this time is, well played, Reaper, well played. As they chat about the kind of inane, casual things that they haven't had time to discuss in years. O5-3 suggests inviting the Ethics Committee over to join. Nobody disagrees. Hour 16. It isn't just the D-classes. All sapient and non-aggressive SCPs have been released from containment, free to spend the last of their time as they wish. Tens of thousands of anomalous individuals are released from containment sites all over the globe. It'd be the greatest victory that the Serpent's Hand could ever ask for, if they weren't all too busy reading to notice. SCP-105 Iris Thompson finally returns to her parents. The Foundation had fed them the lie that their daughter had died many years before, but as Iris had a tendency to do, she was ready to work a miracle. Her parents embrace her with open arms. They'll spend their last hours together catching up on what's happened since they parted ways and making up for lost time. They couldn't be happier. SCP-1867 Lord Blackwood, the fantastical sea snail, is delivered into a warm rock pool near the site where he was being contained. There he might finally have one more grand adventure before all is said and done. Though afterward, he may not have the time to tell anyone about it. A terrible shame, really, because nobody spins a yarn like Lord Blackwood. The non-aggressive little misters run free. Mr. Fish eagerly returns to his native Boston, Massachusetts, where he enjoys one more lobster sandwich before the end of the world. Mr. Headless decides to go hat shopping because he wants to look good for the apocalypse. Mr. Lost finally settles down for the afternoon, deciding that, just this once, he's earned himself a rest. SCP-2800 Cactus Men returns to Edinburgh to spend his last days picking up litter and helping old ladies cross the street. SCP-3663 The Tunnel Monster walks the streets of his hometown, searching for an old friend hoping to reunite before it all ends. SCP-073 Kane decides to take a walk outside for the first time in thousands of years. He can't help but smile, as the bright, colorful life beneath his feet is growing faster than his presence can kill it. What a truly beautiful...
beautiful day. Knowing that there's no longer time for cults to form and bother him, SCP-2662 Cthulhu decides to take a break from his intense Minecraft session and go take a walk outside. It feels so good to have the sun on his tentacles once more and to feel the lush green grass under his suction cups. He shakes his head thinking once again about the irritating cults that had been pestering him for decades. What kind of idiot would want him to destroy a world like this? SCP-343, also known as God, sighs and looks over all his creation for what he knows to be the last time. His mouth curls into a smile as he thinks, Well, we had a pretty good run. Still in a cell, SCP-049, the Plague Doctor, puts his feet up and decides to relax. The pestilence will soon be taken care of. On some animalistic level, below thought, below even instinct, SCP-096 feels grateful that no gaze will ever fall upon it again. Somewhere fizzling in a vat of acid within a highly secure containment chamber, SCP-682 is feeling, for the first time in its hellish existence, a sense of profound relief. The pain, the hate, the rage, the constant termination attempts, it all be over soon. Hour 23. People gather in the streets. They laugh and dance and sing as the moon shines, fat and white, far above. Deep in their hearts, they quietly contemplate the end of all of this. But why worry? Why spoil the fun? There's no future left to worry about. Strangers become as close as family in the end. Human or otherwise, anomalous or non-anomalous. Chaos insurgency agents have last suppers with ex-serpent's hands and GOC operatives. There is no hate left. No violence. No malice. No cruelty. The greatest tragedy in all of this is that it took the ultimate end to bring it out in people. But why worry? Why worry? Seconds pass. Then minutes. The world buzzes. It hums. Trillions of creatures doing everything they'd wanted even though it won't last. In the face of the true end, the world has never been more alive. Hour 24. Silence. Forever. And ever, and ever, good night. We'll end this video the way it began, by putting a question to you. How would you spend your last 24 hours on Earth? Let us know down in the comments, because it Like I said before, I can't die. Humans can die, but I can't. And there's some the Scarlet Team. My dad. A title that invokes the image of a stairway leading up to a land of peace and paradise. But where else could a stairway lead? To a dusty attic full of old photo albums? To the upper level of a mall where the movie theater and frozen yogurt shop are neatly situated? Perhaps it leads to a rooftop with a beautiful view. Or maybe, just maybe, a staircase could lead you to SCP-2427. SCP-2427, appropriately nicknamed a thing full of stuff, is an extra-dimensional area filled with a variety of unusual and anomalous objects. SCP-2427 can be accessed by way of a broken stone staircase located in rural Ohio. According to the legend, carrying a sprig of hemlock up the broken stairs will allow a person to emerge into a mysterious grass clearing that appears to be in a forest somewhere in the United States. No matter what time a person ascends the staircase, the solar time in the clearing will always be 2 people, keeping a watchful eye for any indication of drama or danger. Violence can and will erupt at any moment. And no matter what, no night at the club is ever routine. But the visitors' chaotic actions are not their own. Though the people's decision to attend the club is of their own free will, after some time settling into the environment, something changes. Over the course of the night, people begin to do things that may otherwise seem out of character for them. In fact, they are playing roles. Though the same roles are played each evening, they are played by different people night after night. Some of these dramas are harmless, but some are violent, and some may even world-threatening. If the partygoers survive their role in their scripts, they will then leave the club and return home, with only a faint memory of the events they took part in that evening. The next night the process renews and the events will repeat, but not all scripts repeat at the same frequency. 
Some are regular, while others, they display strange behavior. The man playing the husband becomes violent when questioned and develops an obsession with the woman playing his wife. The Foundation believes it wise to keep these two individuals separated. Oddly, SCP-453 seems to prefer men who are shorter and less physically strong than the other men to play the husband. Attempts to short-circuit the script have proved unsuccessful, only delaying it. An attempt to remove the weapon, a wine bottle, has led to the husband using more dangerous weapons like a bar stool instead, which can lead to fatalities. It seems that SCP-453 gets what it wants, and what it wants is for the show to go on. Then there is Script 21, The Senator's Visit. This is considered a higher priority script, and the Foundation knows to be on high alert for medical intervention to prevent fatalities. This one kicks off at 10.13pm, as a civilian steps into the club and takes the role of the 